Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a GameStar presentation. My name is Coldblood and I will be bringing this one to you by myself. It will be rank number two Bayleave versus the newcomers rank number eight Orbit Gaming. And we will of course go and jump into the champion select. Shout out to Blazian from the Cow Tipping Dwarves who is uh, making a fact about his body known in the chat. So. With is Bayleaf on the left, obviously. All of the players are tagged up, which makes my job very, very easy. Uh, they have the number two, going for, uh, trying to defend their number eight spot. Already we can see the Rengar, Kassadin, Riven, and Lee Sin bans out. So, these players really do not want to go against Assassination. And uh, there's been a lot of talk lately about how unsafe AD carries are in the preseason. They're very easy to kill basically so it's not surprising to see champions banned out that excel against AD carries the Cassidy and the Rengar the Olaf the Riven even Lee Sin he's very strong early on and uh, later on he actually protects AD carries quite well but I'd say it's just you know the uh, the orbit guys they do not want to go against that Lee Sin Deathify of course very skilled on the Brind Monk, and he will not be able to go onto that champion in this game. And Susan, gonna be the last ban out. He uh, was Narciss until the GTV2 Twitch chat decided his real name is Susan. So, we are uh, not gonna be seeing any of the doggy, and Shivana instantly locked in by the Bayleaf guys that could go into the top lane or jungle. And of course, Shivana packs a lot of damage into her kit. She sacrifices. Uh, you know, she sacrifices CC and and that by... Uh, well, yeah, I was trying to list things she sacrifices, but there isn't too many of them. She is resourceless. She has a fair bit of mobility with the uh, the Dragon's Ascent and the Dash from Burnout. A lot of damage, a lot of percentage damage as well. And a shout out to Galaxy, who is uh, saying that there are players who got to their rank from Hokage. He was apparently a very good support. There's no one in the game called Hokage, so maybe that is one of his Smurfs names. So, I'm not sure where the Shivana will go in the end. I do believe I've seen Bayleaf take her into the jungle, and that worked out quite well for them. They had really strong objective control, so it could go either way. There will be the Jana and the Aatrox lock-ins by Orbit Gaming. Jana very smart against Shivana for a number of reasons. The slow, the knock-up, the awesome disengage from the ultimate. Uh, which is Monsoon, and Aatrox just, he could go top or jungle, exactly the same as Shivana, so a decent pick in response. We've got a lot of shoutouts of Bayleaf coming out from the chat, and uh, I don't know what happened guys, but Liggy Bro 123 turned into Liggy Girl, so uh, hopefully that surgery wasn't too expensive. Hokage pronounced ho k <laughs> Alright, I won't keep saying that one. So, we're looking at the pickups for Bayleaf at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pick up a support that goes all in against the Janna. The, um, she, she controls her lane very easily, does the Wind Lady, and you want someone who can jump on top of her and just overwhelm her appeal. Uh, and of course the uh, the all-in support's very strong at the moment, but we will have Elise and Annie locked in here. We can assume the Annie will be going bot lane, which uh, completely overrides everything I was saying. Uh, her auto attack range and her uh, ple uh, plethora of stuns over a uh, period of time mean that she has some decent control for herself. And Elise, we would assume, uh, oh, actually, she could really go anywhere as well. We'll assume that one's going into the jungle for now, but of course, uh, we black out the summoners just so the players can't ghost on the stream, which uh, is a pretty decent idea, I believe. They're not able to see what the other team's running until the loading screen, where they'd be already able to see that. So, we've seen Bayleaf on uh, GTV2 here a couple of times. We haven't yet seen Orbit, but uh, in the lobby, they were mostly in Platinum and Diamond. So, uh, well, we're looking forward to this one. Should be a uh, tip-top match. Of course, the uh, the Bayleaf guys in Platinum themselves. Uh, confirmed on Pooksy Scream, Jordan Lewis is gay. Not sure who Jordan Lewis is, but he is happy, apparently. So, the Ezreal and the J4 lock-ins. Now, Aatrox and J4, very similar champions. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say Aatrox was heading into the lane, but of course I don't know who's the top laner for their team, and uh, there's actually no spite on any of them at the moment, so uh, it, it'd be difficult to say which is going where. Ezreal Jana bot lane, uh, unless they do something crazy like Ezreal mid. 
The Ezreal Janna lane is fantastic at disengaging, and the poke can be pretty deadly with a uh, Eye of the Storm Mystic Shot. It can be very difficult to weather. And we see Lucian. I can't believe he slipped this far into the pick. Now, there was um, some American AD carry. What's his name? Um, Double Lift. He was whinging that uh, AD carries are uh, well, what I was saying before, but I, I knew it before he started complaining. He, he Basically, he's saying that any AD carry is useless unless they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lucian in lane. Because otherwise, he just smashes them and then outscales. I believe Ezreal uh, has a bit of a hard time. He was saying Jinx and Tristana are the only ones who do decent against him. Uh, and of course, I think we've seen Bayleaf play Lucian in their last game. I did very well on that. We'll have to see if they can replicate that one. And Syndra will be the last pickup. I'm excited to see her, the uh, the second Korean lady. She's a very awesome champion to watch. We'll have to see how that goes for them. I'm trying to think of who the mid is. I have a feeling it's Peace, but I probably got that one wrong. Now, the mid lane up for Orbit Gaming was wisely left until last, and looks like they're thinking about the first Korean lady, Ari, who is based on the, uh, the Korean legend of the Seductress who lures men in and then takes their souls away. No, Lysandra will be the pickup in the end. I think that's a bit smarter against the Syndra, as, of, of course, a good good timing on the ultimate from Lysandra will negate Syndra's burst from the cataclysmic power or unleashed power or whatever it is. But, uh, of course, that Lysandra could be going top very easily. We'll have to see who is going where. We'll reveal the summoners in about 40 seconds. So, hmm... The bottom lane we can analyze, Lucian Annie has a lot of damage and a lot of range, but Janna and, and Ezreal, probably the best champions against an Annie, as, uh, you know, if Tibbers drops on, you can just jump out of there pretty quickly, monsoon it all back. Uh, a lot of it's going to come down to Janna, who looks like she will be played by Pogster here. Um, particularly if either a Shivana or an Elise comes in, the timing on that Monsoon and the Howling Gale will be absolutely key. Uh, I would expect the uh, the passive GP10 from the Janna, the uh, Nomad's Medallion or something like that, and then the Spell Thief's Edge or whatever it is for the Annie. Now we can go ahead and reveal the Summoners, and it looks like it may be... It's it's hard to tell with um, the solo lanes because teleport normally means top, but I think Aatrox he'd have a lot of trouble against Syndra. She's got a decent bit of sustained damage. Um, she's got a decent auto attack range as well, and of course if he all ins her, she can just knock him back with the stand aside. No, that's Draven. Uh, what is it? I don't know. I don't know. What's it? hang on. Let's find out, guys. What is Syndra's E called to disengage? And of course we can't tell, but we'll have a look at what piece is running. He has some armor, some armor pen on his Syndra, that's interesting. Wants, uh, maybe he is expecting to go against the Aatrox and wants a little bit of the uh, the auto attack damage. Of course he's got the runic affinity. We'll assume Lissandra's going mid, and that will be all timing based obviously. And I'd be assuming that one is to roam, but we could see a Aatrox mid. Uh, looks like the less auto attack damage taken, picking up by Valk. And uh, you probably... Do oh, actually that'd be pretty handy against Shivana as well. Um, so if we assume Aatrox and Shivana are going head to head, I would give that one early on at least to the Aatrox. It looks like he's picked up the life steal bonus and has actually gone 921. You don't often see that on a lane Aatrox. They like to maximize that early all in that they have. So Ran God we can assume is going against Liggy Bro, who is now Liggy Girl. We'll be running the flat AD, which gives you some decent damage on the burnout. Also running the 921, so uh, there may be a little bit of brick walls bashing against each other up there. Now the junglers, Elise versus Javan. Both very good, obviously. Decent clear times, very good ganks. Elise is probably one of the strongest uh, pre-6 gankers in the game, because if she lands a cocoon on you... Well, that's GG right there, but she can also just go into the spider form and uh, repel on top of you as well, which is very dangerous if she is allowed to do that. And then, of course, her spiderlings give her some great sustain in the jungle, uh, not only healing her up from the uh, skittering frenzy, but also tanking the minions for her, which was nerfed in uh, late Season 3, of course. They reduced the armor of the spiderlings significantly early on. 
Um, but she's still, of course, very, very strong. And she can do a lot of damage with no items. That's a big benefit. J J4, he does decent damage early on, but it definitely falls off if he doesn't build damage, which, of course, with the preseason changes, we could well see him doing. So, we'll have to see what happens here, guys. I'm excited. Uh, as far as level 1 power goes for the teams, we've seen a lot less level 1 because of the um, the changes to First Blood. It makes it... and, and the less uh, less time on death uh, at, at levels 1 through 3 make it so dying early on isn't really the... It, it's, it's not that bad anymore. So... I would expect to see both the teams just kind of going for what they want, but I would give it over to whichever team has Annie, which was of course Bayleaf, as she can potentially stun everyone for 1.5 seconds with the Disintegrate if she charges it up in the fountain, and that is very, very scary. So uh, it'll be up to Orbit to try and defend their jungler with his start, but of course we are now getting into the skin battle here, ladies and gents, the fun part of GameStar where we check out the uh, the swag that the players will be carrying in immediately. We see Victorious Elise from Deathify, who is Diamond, so you obviously got that one quite easily. And the Ice Drake Shivana, which is the only one with a recall skin. Down the bottom, we have almost a full house for Orbit, so they'll be taking this one away. Uh, the Justicator Aatrox, that's an interesting one. If, uh, if any of you have read the story of Aatrox, he's meant to be like a... Um, when, when any side is losing in a fight or when he feels like it, he comes out and kind of inspires them to fight, like, to rally. And, um, it's... Uh, his his base skin is what his enemies see him as, like this bringer of blood and death and stuff that goes against But this is meant to be an interpretation of uh, the people that he's fighting for, that he's rallying, that he's this angelic saviour who comes in and, d despite them being against... Uh, bad odds, they, they keep going and they end up winning. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then, of course, he says some awesome things. This will be a lane Aatrox who... It's difficult for him to do anything if he doesn't dominate the lane. Uh, or you, I guess you could say the same thing for Shivana. They've both got very limited ranged capability. Um, Aatrox brings some more CC and some more, I'd say, innate damage with his uh, free attack speed and the blood price on his W. But of course, Shivana can AoE entire teams to dust, and she can backdoor with almost no repercussions. There's not a lot that can lock her down for long on the side of Orbit. So, we should be getting into the game here any second. All the players are 100%, unless the client has decided it does not want to work. We'll see how we go. Um, so, level 1, we'll have a look at it while everyone's here. The, oh, okay. <laughs> as soon as I say that, decides to jump into the game. Why not? Better late than never. So, we will go through the side of Bayleaf here. We'll just quickly turn the chat off as they, of course, pause. We'll turn the chat back on to find out what's going on. Um, something items on AD carry. <laughs> Uh, so we'll switch these ones around. Uh, we're not sure where Lissandra's going just yet, are we? We'll assume mid for now. So we'll chuck her there. Uh, there we go. Everything's in ready. All right, looks like we will be resuming here, ladies and gents. We'll go through each of the players. Aatrox is said to be one of the gods of the League of Legends universe. That he wasn't playable too soon. Galaxy doing a little bit more trolling, I think. So the game will resume here. As uh, we'll go over both the teams. So representing rank number two, Bailey, but will be Peace on the Syndra. In the jungle, we will have Deathify on the Victorious Elise. Hopefully for them, it will be Victorious in this game. We have a Liggy Bro 123, who is now Liggy Girl. Has started off with the Runic Shield. I think we did even see that one. Astro Cat will be on the Lucian as the AD carry. And his partner in crime will be Frozen King, who was uh, until recently known as Sasuke. And for the Orbit Gaming guys in their very first GameStar broadcast, it will be Flaccid on the J4. That's an interesting name. We will have Illyria, Illyria Q on the Ezreal. His partner in crime will be Pogster on the Janna. We have Ren God up at the top on the Aatrox. I was somehow right about that one. That doesn't happen often. And Valk will be the Lissandra in the mid. Now, uh, both Syndra and Lissandra have fairly short range, but are quite spammy with their Qs. Uh, Lissandra obviously has more mobility, but Syndra can knock back. I think now it's called Scatter the Week. Let's have a look. Yeah, I remember that one as soon as it's right in front of me. Um, 
If you're having trouble with the stream, guys, I put it on source. That should fix it for you. If not, I uh, you'll Maybe have to try and fix it yourselves. Well. So it looks like uh, Deathify will be starting with the red buff here as uh, the standard goes off by Flaccid to check what's in the bush. The ward will go off by the um, by the Bayleaf guys, and if Orbit were paying attention, they would have seen that ward go down, and they would have known that. Uh, the Bay Leaf guys will be starting at the blue buff, as of course they are. And up at the top, we will have Ren God versus Liggy Girl. On the uh, looks like Doran's blade goes from Ren God, which tells me that he wants to try and control this lane early. Doran's shield, much more of a stance start in this Bruiser heavy meta. So we see Deathfire going to hit the level two. Flaccid already on the level two, and he's on his way over to the. Oh no, he probably will be going wraiths with the smite down. Deathfire going to take his own wraiths there. Flaccid will be going across the wall. And there we go. So we can see uh, exactly what we thought would happen with the GP tens down at the bottom lane. Uh, interestingly enough, the only non-warding trinket by uh, anyone in the game is Frozen King on the with the sweeping lens, which is good for lane control, which is something Annie likes. But a lot of damage going on to him, and that's not even for, oh, probably it was Eye of the Storm at Mystic Shot. But even then, very, very difficult for her to deal with, already having to pop a health potion or two. So I thought Howling Gale was going off, but it hasn't actually been learned yet. Uh, CS in the mid lane looking pretty equal, so it's going to come down to what the junglers decide to do. I accept that Illyria Q falling very low at the bottom lane. Astro Cat has taken damage, for a lot of damage from the minions, but will uh, be able to back off in the end. So, a lot of damage on both AD carries down here. Frozen King looking quite weak as well. Pogster with a full bar of HP, but in all ends, it's a little bit hard for Janna to actually do something this early on, at least. As Rengod going to be pushed back here, he does have his passive blood well available, as Deathify and Flaccid will be having a little bit of a 1v1 in the bush here. Flaccid forced to combo his way out of there, and Rengod going to be okay for now. He does have the blood thirst to sustain his way back up. Deathify going to zone Flaccid out of the jungle here and it looks like a whole lot of nothing going to result from this except for Rengod going to be pressured a little bit more but he's doing a nice job of last hitting under the tower and he is equal on CS. He's actually beating her at the moment. As we can see Valk may be under some pressure here but he has wisely backed off going to AoE the wave down so that uh he can keep the minions away from himself. Peace trying to get some zoning going on with the Dark Orb or the Dark Sphere. But uh, Valk is unfazed in there. And the CS in Peace's favor at the moment. Down the bottom of the lane, the CS is also the same. The only difference is up at top. Rengod doing a very good job against Leggy Girl. But of course, as time goes on, I feel like Sh Sh uh, Aatrox's edge over Shivana grows less and less. As uh, Shivana really ramps up in the damage as she gets levels in her abilities. Whereas Aatrox... He, um, he needs to go all in, and that was prevented by Bayleaf from the early pressure that he uh, provided. So, we can see Flaccid will be picking up the Wraith and recalling. He has about 700 at the moment, can go for his uh, Spirit Stone and Boots, or if uh, he decides to go Madreds, uh, either is really viable on J4. No, he will go Doran's Blade, so stop everything I said. Uh, up at the top, the ultimate will be available for Rengod soon. That uh, sustain from the Bloodthirst serving him very well there. Shivana, of course, has no built-in sustain. We can add that to the very short list of her weaknesses. As Deathify going to continue clearing out the jungle here. The CS at bottom lane starting to swing into Ashrakat's favor. But, of course, there is a bunch of minions for Alia Q to pick up. The Howling Gale is dodged there by Frozen King, and both teams playing quite uh, defensively in the starting parts of the game. Only a slight edge to the purple team, and that would be Aatrox's lead up at the top. He's now at a 14 gold lead. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to jump back. I completely missed that one. So, we know that uh, Deathify is going to be coming in with the gank there. Oh, jeez, I don't know how I missed that one. Oh, it's not going to be a nice cocoon going on to Pogster. And that Q damage from Lucian, and then a nice stun from Annie Pogster. Not going to be able to flash out of that one. We will have the teleport by Lissandra coming in. And the J4 is there as well. This could be a potential double kill for Orbit Gaming. They will indeed turn that one around. And who managed to pick those two up? One went to Ezreal, one went to Lissandra. That is perfect for Orbit. They're going to be 400 gold in the lead after a nicely executed first blood 
from Bayleaf gets turned around by a very decisive uh, teleport out of the Lysandra. Who, of course, is played by Valk, now has the Frozen Tomb. And because the um, Unleashed Power has travel time, it will be able to block that one and still take its cooldown if uh, the reactions are quick enough. So, we thought that Valk would be roaming early on, and we were indeed correct on that one. Now that the Frozen Tomb is available, we can only assume that will happen more and more. Catalyst of the Protector will be picked up, so going for the uh, Rod of Ages build. You normally see either Hourglass or Abyssal first on a uh, Lissandra who's doing quite well. He's behind in the CS by a little bit, but of course the kill and the assist more than going to make up for that one. The CS for the AD carry is looking similar. We can see a blue build going off from Alaria Q. Alaria, I, th I feel like I'm saying that one wrong. Sorry, buddy. If you can, <laughs> if you're watching the VOD, probably uh, murdering your name there. So Astro Cat, uh, no, actually he sells the Tear and goes for Sheen and another Doran's Blade. That is very smart because Tear is an investment. And against something as strong as a Lucian, you cannot afford to go for the mid to late game when he's just going to do terrible things to you early on. So I really like that decision to go for the Sheen. That uh, will allow him to keep his distance, which will definitely help out. So Flaccid going to be recalling here. He does have the boots. How much gold is he packing? Or oh, 600? So he could potentially finish. Yes, yeah, there he goes for the Spirit Stone, which tells me he wants to be ganking more than farming. I'll have to see how that goes for him. As the mid lane, the CS lead still in Peace's favor. I don't think I've seen a Syndra in Cyber Game and not be like 5 0 by this point. So, Valk doing a great job at not dying yet. As, uh, the Syndras in Cyber Game often do quite well. So, we'll have to see. The Blues uh, have already. Oh, it has already respawned for all the gaming. We can assume this one will be going over to Valk on the Lissandra, but he has plenty of mana should he decide to go without that one. In the top lane, like we predicted, the 921s, meaning that there's not a whole heck of a lot of damage. Both of these guys very tanky. The Dragonborn, and then... Oh, actually, no, they're going to be going all in. Just as I say that, Ignite will go off by Liggy Girl, falling lower and lower. Ignite will go off on Rangod and pop the Bloodwell. Liggy Girl has to get out of here. He cannot stick around... Gonna take a Blade of Torment to the face, and the, um, I'm not sure what that mastery is called, but it's uh, Perseverance or something. As Illyria Q going to be stunned up there, will that be enough for him to go down? The culling will go off, but it is just a pea shooter as Flaccid will get a beautiful Cataclysm off, and the True Shot Barrage will pick up a double kill. What a fantastic job from Orbit Gaming to turn that one around. That Cataclysm was bang on perfect from Flaccid. That was exactly what he needed to do, and Illyria Q barely got that out of that one by the skin of his his or her teeth with uh, the barrier definitely saved him there and unfortunately the culling doesn't do too much so Asher Cat probably would have wanted to back off on that one Valk falling lower and lower in the mid lane now behind by 14 CS Peace still has the ignite and the uh, unleashed power so if a stun lands this Lissandra will be in a lot of trouble. It looks like Liggy Girl actually going to be sticking around here. That Perseverance going to be very handy. It uh, regenerates a percentage of your missing health based on your max health. Alayriac. Oh, thank you, Galaxy. Alayriac. That makes a lot more sense, honestly. So, we'll have to find out what this pause is about. And apparently, Flaccid is having some uh, latency issues. So, we'll wait for him to resolve that one. We'll have a look at the top. Rangod at a comfortable 24 CS lead. Going for more of a damaging build, where, whereas we will see Liggy Girl go for the Sunfire first. Uh, the Sunfire Cape first, which of course allows you to farm behind the turret very, very easily and uh, potentially go for the Blade of the Ruined King. Both of these champions provide a lot of threat, AoE threat, in the fights. And of course, they can munch on AD carries. The blue will be pinged by Bayleaf here. That one will probably be going over to Peace. Syndra's love the eating up the blue buffs. That one would be passed over successfully. The ward coverage for Liggy Girl up here looking pretty damn good, aided by the trinket in the pocket. As, uh, what is it? Alariac. Alariac. With, uh, with the red buff, makes that poke even stronger. Monsoon is now available. The Nomad's Medallion was finished up, so the gold income for Pogs are going to be pretty damn high. But of course, if Frozen King can get the harassment on, will be good enough. So it looks like there was a failed gank up in the top lane, where any cooldowns blown. The Flash could... No, I think he flashed earlier on in that fight. So Valk was heading over, decides he does not want to. Ooh, Valk is going to... Oh, that was a <laughs> nice prediction there by Peace on the Syndra. 
as Lucian's wave clear going to be coming out here. Of course, Lucian's minor costs are pretty high and up at the top lane. Liggy Girl could do nothing about that one. We might just jump back 15 seconds and see what uh, happens, guys. I don't know how I can say flash without laughing either, Swizzy. As uh, the 1v1 Black Ops going to go up at the top lane. The, uh, I don't know about that flash, Liggy, bro. As Rengod going to pick up that one quite easily. Does have the bilge water cutlass. Deathify does not manage to do much there. So just going to be holding the lane. We'll see the gank onto Peace here. He does have the ultimate. He could try and turn this into a 1v2. Nice scatter of the week. They're going to dive under the tower here. As the Frozen Tomb goes off, a lot of damage is going under Valk. And Peace will walk away with a return kill by the skin of his teeth that was very close there and uh, orbit they're doing a great job around the map they're at a two and a half thousand gold lead tibbers is available down at the bottom lane here so is monsoon and uh, i guess the ad carry ultimates aren't really that good in a skirmish unless of course you get doubles with the true shot barrage so we can see that flaccid will be coming down now thanks a lot swizzy now <laughs> i feel like giggling every time i say that one I'll have to try and hold my tongue. So Flaccid going to be coming down here. He does not have the Cataclysm. He does, of course, have the Flash, though. Frozen King going to be throwing down the Sweeping Lens, which doesn't do too much because it doesn't grant vision. Uh, Deathify going to be coming down. Chucks his Trinket in the bush, helping out his team. And how's the CS doing? Astro Cat's doing a good job of uh, keeping fairly even, despite the, uh, the amount of love he's been getting from the J4. I feel like an engage will be coming on here soon. It's it's get definitely down to the supports. Every, anyone who knows their stuff knows that supports carry the carries. Supports are probably the most important role in the team uh, in the game. I'll just say that right now. So it's going to be down to the engage from Frozen King and the disengage from Pogster here. I feel like mid and top aren't going to be doing much while their ultimates on cooldown. So this will be the place to uh, look at. I'd like to point out the uh, the Spectre's Cow pick up by um, Rengod is very smart considering Shivana is supposed to be a mixed damage f fighter. And she's actually got a lot of magic damage. We'll look at that while nothing's going on. Um, oh, it looks like there may be a little bit of an engage up here with, uh, the blood well is available, so Liggy Girl gonna have to be careful here. Uh, hopefully you guys can't hear my phone going off in the background. True Shot Barrage going to go off on to Astro Cat, as, uh, the Eye of the Storm going to absorb a lot of that damage, and Ali Riak gonna get out of that one. Flaccid is going to recall, he's got a thousand gold, could, uh, we'll, we'll see whether he's going for a damage build or if he picks up the Kindle Gem. That will be the telling sign. It could go for Boots of Moby. What are you going to go for, Flaccid? No, he didn't actually recall. So there you go. That's what I get for not watching there. So yeah, the Spectre's Cow, very smart from the Aatrox CDR. Very handy. I, I, I don't think he'll be going for Banshees. And Shivana's damage, a lot of it is magic. As we can see, the gank going to be coming on here down at the bottom lane. Cataclysm goes off onto Frozen King. Will Tippers go down? It manages to stun Pogster up, but the teleport means that I think Bayleaf are in a lot of trouble here. Asher Cat even runs into the tower because why not? And double kill will go to Flaccid there, who uh, thankfully for his team he didn't recall. He's now packing the 1700, and this could transition very easily into a dragon for Orbit Gaming. As they chuck down the pink ward, don't know if that ward is visible there, but they do know that Death Fight is coming around. Of course, Repel does give vision, so I'll have to see if he utilizes that to try and get the smite steal off. No, the dragon will be taken away by Orbit, and they're doing a fantastic job from their number 8 position on the CG ladder. They are at a 4 and a bit thousand gold lead. And uh, it, it's spread out around the map. Uh, I mean, Peace is doing very good on the Sindri. He's 28 CS ahead now. Just hits the 30 mark, or 31. So, uh, Sindri's going to be a lot of trouble as it gets into the mid-game. <laughs> Sorry, that was the home phone, guys. That's not my... Uh, I've got, like, an even worse ringtone for my mobile. <laughs> so, I wasn't, that was the home phone. It's uh, Beethoven, I think, which is good. Have, good to have a little bit of culture. As uh, Peace will... He does have the level 2 in the Unleashed Power. I think Peace needs to try and have a little bit more presence on the lanes. As Valk has definitely made his presence known at the bottom. Which is... Uh, I mean, the CS for Astro Cat, he's doing a really good job at continuing that. The uh, He's going for the Bloodthirster first. Ali Riku already has the Triforce with no boots. I personally prefer the Bloodthirster into Triforce on Lucian. I feel like if you rush Triforce, you kind of, like... 
no good. <laughs> What's his Q called? The Piercing Light. That has a massive AD ratio. You can see it's already doing 280 damage. Which, and when he gets a bloodthirst, so that's going to skyrocket. So, the ping goes off on the blue buff piece. We'll be picking that one up. Valk going to be returning to the store with his 2,000. So he could easily go Rod of Ages and Sorcerer's Shoes. Or he could decide to get something else. No, he will go for that one. As Flash is going to be heading to the mid lane to watch there. He's actually going to go for Aegis of the Legion, despite being 304. Going to go for a bit of tankiness. And I guess when Syndra is the problem, building a lot of magic resist like this, pretty damn smart, I'd have to say. So we'll have to see if Bayleaf can come back from that one. They're certainly not out of it yet. Looks like Peace going to try and have a bit of impact on the bottom lane, but it is watered up very nicely. Sorry, that was the wrong button. This is the vision for the purple team. There's nowhere that Peace can get in where he will not be seen, except oh, even here they've got a ward. So Pogs are doing a fantastic job at uh, protecting Ali Riku here. So Astro Cat, Frozen King going to be on their own, but the amount of bursts that they'll be able to throw out with um, the piercing light and the tippers combo. Well, I, I guess it's getting to the point where they need more than two seconds to blow someone up. Particularly with the Jhana shields and Monsoon and whatnot. Exhaust will be off cooldown in a little bit. That'll definitely help. As we can see, the Frozen Tomb will go on to peace in the mid lane here. Flash goes off just as Flash does the Cataclysm. Oh, nice dodge on the Q there from the Lissandra, but it will not be enough. Valk, I think, was the one to pick that one up. He was indeed 2-1-3. And uh, things looking very dire for the Bayleaf guys here. As uh, the zoning going on at the bottom lane. How's the top lane doing? Liggy Girl trying to pick up as much CS as he or her can. He's now down by 50, which is quite significant, honestly. Does she have enough? Oh, she's actually got enough to pick up the Sunfire Cape, should she desire. The 1v1 going to be going on down here. Will the Dragon Scent be blown? No. Doesn't panic and just backs away. Keep calm and walk away, they do say. As uh, will the engage go down at the bottom lane, we can see pink. Uh, the the pings are going off from the orbit gaming guys. Their fantastic map control means that they know exactly where the spider is at all times. A lot of damage going to go into Frozen King, but we will see the stun come out. The culling going to do a significant amount of damage there, but Deathify will get Howling Galed. Will that be enough for Illyria Q to get out? They're going to try and land the cocoon here. Will he manage to dodge it? He blows his flash to dodge that one, and he definitely would have died if that had gone down. So nice work on not giving that advantage away. Now, Rengod, he, uh, does he have enough for the Blade of the Ruined King? He certainly does, and enough for the... Um, the armor boots, the ninja tabby, if he so desires to pick that one up. In the mid lane, we can see what is the goal? 5700. So, despite not well, despite Lissandra being 213, Peace has 100 more gold. So, Bailey's definitely not out of this one yet. I mean, their team fighting team is pretty damn strong. Uh, Lisa's is probably the only champ on their team that isn't good in a team fight. But even then, she can do a significant amount of uh, like starting off the fight in a favorable way. Leggy girl going to be falling lower and lower. Deathify will be coming in. Bottom tower will fall thanks to the intervention of Flaccid there. First piece of infrastructure coming in. I, f I really hate you, Swazzy, for ruining that name for me. I'm trying my best not to crack into giggles. So the dragon, of course, one minute and 15 seconds from respawning, and I'm sure Orbit are aware of that. We're going to have to see a contest from the Bayleaf guys, perhaps see Liggy girl come down. As the tower will be held up for now, I think Bayleaf realize they can't let this global objective go, even though it's less of a global objective with the changes, they still need to try and hold on to it. As uh, I thought I saw a bit of blue, that was the Annie. As Peace... Ooh. We haven't seen any engages go in Peace's favor yet, he's had to try and react to the J4 coming in. The first time he managed to come away with the kill, the second time, no. Astrocat going to be throwing it down the ward. He's got his Bloodthirster and his Berserker's Grave, so his damage is going to be quite strong. Last Whisper has almost been finished up by Ali Rike. He's only about 400, 500 gold of that one. Rengod going to be uh, recalling out of that one. Liggy Girl with the Sunfire Cape going to be able to annihilate this wave with the AoE, as it looks like Valk going to be coming up to try and stop this tower going down. She, of course, does have teleport, should she be required, and another part of the map. As we can see, there is still about a 5.5000k gold lead to the Orbit Gaming guys. They're currently number 8 on the CG ladder against number 2, Bayleaf, who are looking a little worse for the wear at the moment. 
but uh, we'll have to see how mid game goes. That will be the decider. As Dragon will now respawn, we need to see some kind of contest here. The Dragon's going to regen a little bit of health. As is the Tibbers available? It is indeed, but it is just a second too late. The flash there. Nice Tibbers will go off though. Lyric Q going to be jumped up. Gets stunned up by the Syndra, and Monsoon will not be enough to save that one. Fantastic stun coming out from Peace. And if they pick up a second one in here, it'll definitely be worth it. Nice by Bayleaf. A double kill for the Syndra, who was already doing well. They'll be very happy with that one. They lost the Dragon, but if they can transition this into a mid-tower, they will be looking very good. Lissandra has some decent lane clear, but will be getting out of that one. Flash is going to be falling lower and lower. Gets caught by the Cocoon, and gets taken out by Deathify. The mid-tower will fall, and now even Liga Girl is here. Looks like Bayleaf have decided enough is enough, and they will be trying to get the push on. Tibbers will be taken out by the True Shop Barrage, and the rest of the minions as well as Rengod going to take down the top. What items does he have? He has the Bork and the Merc Treads. So I would, yeah, I would say back out now would be a good idea as uh, he manages to take a tower for a tower. Uh, Dragon did go the way of Orbit as uh, will Valk be able to interrupt any recalls? No, she will not. So that fight definitely went in Bailey's favor. They got three kills and a tower in return for a tower and a dragon. So, this one certainly is not over just yet. As, oh, Deathify will get Frozen Tombed up and not be able to do anything. A piece is going to flash away. The flash goes out by Rengod. Ignite goes off. Astro Cat is in. Going to try and take him down. Rengod still has tower aggro. I don't know if he can manage to get out of this one. Al Q going to be tanking up the tower. And it will be enough to get them out of there. Oh, okay, so that was a risky dive, but they managed to pick up two in return, the Orbit guys, and if they can get the mid-tower, they uh, will be looking pretty good on the lane control, although the culling will come out, and if there's one thing the culling is good against, it's a, it is minions. So that push will be halted in its tracks as Alary Q will he get caught out here. No, the Draven Ward does go down. Double Flower Ward there as well, and a uh, Purple Flower Ward going to go down as well. So I'm sorry if the uh, the stream's skipping a bit here, guys. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It may actually be me. So, how much gold is the Shivana packing? She's got 1,100, so it may be past the time where Bork would be anywhere good. And uh, we could see Liggy Girl go for, say, a Spear of Visage or something. There is a... Uh, oh, well, not the most magic damage, I guess. She, she could go for the Blade of the Rune King, should she desire. Death. Death of Fire going to be going, looks like, for the Rileys or perhaps the Sunfire Cape as the push will continue by Orbit in the mid here. As uh, Bayleaf may have left this one wide open, they do have Astro Cat coming back in. Liggy Girl going to try and clear this one out. And of course, Flaccid didn't build much damage at all, so not going to be able to take that one down just yet. Death of Fire going to be spotted by the several thousand wards that are around here. As it looks like Bayleaf, they want to fight as a team, and they are pushing up. There is no Bloodwell available for the Aatrox. Both of the bottom laners are going to decide to recall rather than push, so looks like Orbit do not want to lose this one in the mid. Lissandra has some very strong wave clear, and Aatrox is pretty decent as well. So, And, of course, True Shot Barrage is just going to annihilate the wave there. Peace does not manage to land a stun. Astrocat going to get off as much damage on the tower as he can. Uh, does he have the Triforce yet? No, he's actually going Last Whisper, which means uh, he's going for more of a uh, able to duel kind of build rather than, you know, kiting in and out of the fight, which I mean, against the dive between Aatrox, Jarvan, and, and Lissandra being able to lock you up, having the upfront damage would probably be better instead of burst in small increments. So the, uh, the tower clear going to go off here, and if we see a cocoon or a launched fear land, that could be the start of the fight. Frozen King does not yet have the level 2 in the Tibbers. He's going for the Frozen King Queen's f claim there. Uh, we can see the Talisman of Ascension finished by Pogst, so he's going to be able to engage quite easily with his team. Rangard going to be up at the top, clearing the wave, so if there was ever a time for Blue Team to go in, this would be it but uh, they're not going to do it for now, it seems. Going to continue pushing forward. This Crete wave looking pretty healthy. Trisha Barrage is once again available, though, and uh, the tower will not take much damage, particularly since the shield will go on top of it. It's still a 5v4 here. Aatrox has no way of getting there quite quickly. I'd expect him to go Randuin's next. That would be a very good pickup for him. 
How much gold is the Aatrox rocking? He's almost got enough for a Giant's Belt or Randuin's. Perhaps he could go Last Whisper as well if he so desired. And Bayleaf going to back off for now. Is the culling available? It is indeed. And it is at level 2. But there are no minions for Orbit at the moment. And this is just becoming a uh, a wait to see who wants to engage first. Liggy Girl going to be engaging Rem God here. But not much will come out of it. A decent bit of damage on to uh, Liggy Girl though. And Rem God putting a huge amount of pressure onto Bayleaf with this move. They're forcing them to divide their attention. And of course Shivana with this build she wants to be a team fighter. She doesn't want to be holding the lane out here. So will we see the engage off? No, the culling will be used to clear out the wave there. Once again, Orbit going to back out. Rengod continuing to push. The bottom lane is, uh, well, the, the tower for Orbit's going to take a lot of damage if they don't clear that one out. How far is True Shot Barrage away? It is available. They could decide to push that one. Oh, we're going to see the cocoon land onto Rengod, and he will get stunned up there. A lot of damage going on to him, and he gets stunned up once again. Going to jump right into the middle of the enemy team. Still has not been popped on the passive. There it goes. Ignite will go off on Valk, and she will manage to get out of there. Alary Q with a triple kill. Will he be able to get the double, uh, the quadra on Frozen King? Oh, the flash forward by J4 will secure that one. Double kill for J4, and the ace goes on Bayleaf. And could this be Orbit coming in and taking the number two spot on the CG ladder just like that? We'll have to see how it goes. The bottom tower does end up falling, but that's only the second tower to fall for the uh, Bayleaf guys. They've got four of their own down. And the uh, tier 3 at the top will fall. Inhibitor soon to follow. And over in the uh, the mid lane, the tier 2 being taken by a very low Lissandra. The Liggy Girl has Dragons Ascented in, but the Inhibitor does end up going down. Quick one soon to get the Shivana out of there. Flaccid, I don't know how he managed to do that one, but he does uh, standard strike combo out of there. Ward goes down from Q. Now I wonder if Bayleaf are going to go for a bit of a desperation Baron here. I don't think that Orbit can do a lot about it with their low health. And it looks like, yep, that is exactly what Bayleaf are going to be doing here. So it's going to be difficult for Orbit to uh, contest this one. They have no passive on the Aatrox. But they're going to be able to poke in and out. Is the Frozen Tomb available for Lissandra? No, it's not. Not for another 15 seconds. So this may actually be a brilliant move from Bayleaf. We can see Valk gets stunned up there. True Shot Barrage will come down. It is too early. And uh, Lissandra will end up going down. J4 steals the Baron and then jumps in with a Damasi with the Cataclysm. He will fall very quickly. But a nice steal in return for two of their lives. Very well done by Orbit. Um, that was a good move from Bayleaf. Just unfortunately didn't work out in the end. They could not get the smite off. They do get two kills for it. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Flaccid going in hard, says Sensism. That's, uh, maybe inappropriate there. He definitely did go in hard there. He's got, uh, he's looking very, very tanky. Did steal the Baron for his team. They're now at a 14,000 gold lead, uh, the Orbit guys. So, this may be the beginning of the end for Bayleaf. They've down to uh, the last piece of infrastructure outside their base, and then they've just got two turrets with inhibitors behind them. The top lane going to require constant attention. Of course, the changes make it so that uh, they only have to focus on clearing top lane. They can uh, relax in the other lanes, but their Desperation Baron did not work out, so it's kind of out of the frying pan into the fire with that move. If they managed to get the smite off, they would have been looking good. But uh, unfortunately for Deathify, he was just a second too slow. Dragon will respawn. There is a pink ward there. I have to say, the pink ward control from uh, from the Orbit Gaming guys is pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, maybe it's just Pogster carrying a bunch around and <laughs> dropping them when it's needed. It looks like he'll have his death cap soon, actually. You don't often see a Jaina with a death cap in a Summoner's Rift, but if anyone plays ARM, you know how annoying it is when a Jaina gets a bunch of AP and a monsoon is like 300 a second. It's awful. And of course, Eye of the Storm now scales off of AD. It is granting for 66 AD. That is a lot. That is a heck of a lot. Guardian Angel has been finished up by a Q on the Ezreal, so it's going to take a big mistake from Orbit for Bayleaf to be back in this one. They are very much far behind now. Of course, Astro Cat going to be clearing this wave up here. They're getting farm delivered directly to their base uh, from the top and the mid, so uh, if they held on, they, they'd be okay. It's just Orbit uh, continuing to apply the pressure like they should in uh, this one. 
as the push will continue on. Will Orbit let up? It looks like no. They will continue to push forward here. I don't think there's a lot Bayleaf can do unless there is a very reckless dive under the tower by Orbit. Of course, Aatrox does have his passive available, does have the aforementioned Randuin, so, I mean, he's going to tank this tower for a long time, and that's only with his first life. And Ezreal himself packing another life. The Frozen Tombs have been fantastic out of Valk. And the fight's definitely um, locking down the right target. And yeah, so it looks like the J4s in the mid just continuing to apply the pressure. They're doing a lot of uh, trying to divide the tension of Bayleaf. I'll have to see if Orbit decide to go in here. The inhibitor will respawn soon. A lot of damage going down on to Peace. And uh, Syndra's already low range, so it's not the best. Blades of Torment will go off. Rengod gets caught up by the Cocoon, gets Eye of the Storm, and will jump in. Nox Frozen King up, going to be scattered the week out. And the Culling will go off. Will manage to pop him into the passive, but Cataclysm goes off by Flaccid, and it will lock them up perfectly here. Oh, a lot of damage going to go out. A couple of members of Bayleaf falling already, and I think that may be the GG right there. Valk going to survive thanks to the monsoon from Pogster. And this, I think this is it. All she wrote for Bayleaf. They may be dropping down to number three on the Cyber Gamer open ladder here. As Orbit going straight for the jugular. They take the first Nexus turret. The second one falling just as quickly. And just like that. They will end up walking away with the victory as they just need to last hit the Nexus there. Last minute swag flash from Flaccid. And they will end up. Oh, as a uh, double, <laughs> double Nexus explosion goes out. And uh, yeah, so that is the end of the game, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for tuning in. We uh, will have to nominate an MVP, and I would have to say Flaccid. He, I think every single Cataclysm he threw out was brilliant. He um and he just had so much pressure in the uh, all throughout the game. Even the very last team fight, his cataclysm was good, locking them up. We'd have to give a runners up to Valk on the Lysandra for some awesome presence that he had as well. But yeah, so thank you for tuning in, ladies and gents. Uh, we will be bringing you some Dota 2 later on tonight if you are interested in that. Otherwise, uh, we'll hopefully bring some more LOL to you later in the week. If uh, you like what you see, head on over to the GameStar Facebook. It should be up the top of your screen. The VOD will be uploaded there in about an hour. And uh, if you'd like your game to be cast by us, please head on over to the Facebook or add Cold Blood and the Client. Give me some details, and I'd be happy to get some coverage for you. Have a wonderful, uh, or have a wonderful December, everyone. Hopefully, see you uh, later on in the week, and we'll all see you next time.